Today we're going to be talking about MIDI keyboards and MIDI controllers. Now, for some of you who have maybe have been watching my videos for a long time or have watched some of my older videos, I used to do a lot more on uh, music tutorials. And for years I have had this oxygen keyboard that my wife got me for Christmas many years ago. And I love it. It's a great keyboard. Uh, it has lots of dob knobs and dials that I can link to stuff in software. Now it is just a MIDI controller. It does not have a built-in synthesizer, which is fine because I want it hooked to a computer where I have an unlimited supply of synthesizers and samples to use. Um, and recently, uh, my wife and I were talking and we wanted to get my daughter a MIDI keyboard. So I looked online and just like the one I have, I wanted to get her something that is more than just the keyboard, you know, uh, I didn't care if it had a synthesizer built in, but I wanted to make sure it was a MIDI controller that I could hook to my computer so that even if it had built in synthesizers, she could still use the unlimited number of synthesizers and samples that we have on a computer. Luckily, my daughter already has her own laptop that she has decked out with stickers that I brought her back from Fossicon this year. Uh, so, I have LMMS installed on there, and I looked online, and after searching through a bunch of MIDI controllers, the cheapest one I could find uh, that had a USB connection and was a MIDI controller keyboard was this uh, MIDI Plus AKM320. It was about $35, and it is a very simple little keyboard. Now, I could have just gotten my daughter a toy keyboard, but as I said, I want this to be something that, especially as she gets older and grows, that it will grow with her. Now, this is nothing fancy here. Uh, you know, very limited on the number of keys here and the number of controls. It doesn't have all the knobs and dials that mine have, but it does have octave and transposing keys here, so even though there's a limited number of keys here, she can always go up and down octaves. Uh, we have a input slider here, which is labeled as volume, but it doesn't have to be volume. It could be any controller we link it to on the computer, and we also have a pitch and modulation wheel, which is going to come in handy. So again, with a MIDI controller, basically, anytime you move or press anything on the controller, all it's doing is really telling the computer that this input is being uh, pressed or moved, and it's going to give it a value of, um, of a 128-bit uh, value, so it's going to be 0 to 127 inputs. So my oxygen keyboard actually has a little display on it that certain sliders and stuff when I move, it tells you what value it is from 0 to 128. Uh, and luckily that's just how MIDI works. So a lot of times when I've uh, done tutorials on LMS or other types of software that have MIDI inputs, people ask me, oh, is such and such controller uh, keyboard compatible with LMMS or Ardor or ZYN add sub effects? And the answer is it's a MIDI, if it's a MIDI input device and your system detects it, then it doesn't matter what software you're using. So as long as your system detects the MIDI device, and it sees it as a MIDI input device, then your software will be able to access it. So let's go ahead and hook this up. So basically in the box for this keyboard uh, with styrofoam packaging, a USB cable, and an instruction manual, which I didn't even really look at. Uh, I don't believe it came with any CD with software, and even if it did, I would just throw it out because basically any hardware I buy, I throw out the CD because it's usually crapware. So I plug in that, you saw the lights flash. Now, as I said, there's uh, transpose and octave keys on here, and unlike uh, my, my oxygen keyboard, which has a display that tells me how many octaves I've moved up and down, uh, basically if the lights are not on, you're centered, uh, and if you start moving down, you don't know how many octaves down you are, but you know that your, your octaves are moved down if this one is red, and if I go this way a couple of times, you'll see that lights up red, and the transpose keys light up blue, so you'll know if you're not centered on the keyboard there. Again, we have the volume slider here, which is labeled as volume, but Again, we can connect it to any input. Same with the pitch and modulation. Now, the pitch will probably leave as pitch, and the volume I'll probably link to the volume in LMMS for probably the global volume, or I can link it to the um, instrument volume. I can also link it to any other slider knob within LMMS. And um, here we have the modulation. Now, modulation, I'm going to use this for something special for my daughter, which I'll talk about in a future video. But let's go ahead and just see how well this works. Sorry for any glare on the screen. I am going to just load up uh, my default sound font files, which I've talked about in a previous video. And here I'm going to click on this little gear here and go down to MIDI and input, and I'm going to choose the AKM320 
uh, MIDI input. So now that I have that, I can also click on here to bring up the instrument settings. And by default we're at piano, so I can start playing here. And I can switch through the instruments by changing the patch number here. And again, this is going to be a value between 0 and 127, which is important. As I said, uh, MIDI inputs are 128-bit uh, input, so we have that 128 0 through 127. Uh, so that's important for the next video I'm going to do on this. Let's go ahead and just talk about the keyboard a little bit more. So let's see, we have the default uh, piano playing here. And uh, so we have the MIDI keyboard linked to the instrument. Now, just like I linked the instrument to the keyboard, I can also link uh, the sliders and knobs to different controllers. So now I'm going to link the volume here to the volume on LMMS. Now, not to sound like a broken record, but again, we have one slider on this uh, keyboard, which is labeled volume, but I can link it to anything. Any of these uh, knobs up here, or the sliders up here, or if I was to pull these sliders up in the screen, I can link into those sliders. Basically, anything that's a knob or slider that has any type of value to it, I can link any of the, the inputs from the keyboard, even key presses have a value from 0 to 128 for velocity, but I can link them to different controllers. But I'm just going to link the volume slider on the keyboard to the master volume up here. So I'm going to right click this and I'm going to go down to connect to controller. And at this point we get this little window here. And I can manually choose one, but it's automatically set to auto detect. So now all I have to do is slide that slider and you can see we got it says channel 1 controller 8. I can click OK and now you can see the volume knob here is all the way down. If I start moving the slider on the physical keyboard, let me see if I can get that in shot for you. So I can do this. So I have that linked. And again, I have this modulation key that I can also do the same thing to for other controls. So again with the keyboard default piano here, and I can control the volume with the slider here, so. So, that's it uh, for the basic setup. Again, LMMS makes it very easy. Most applications that have MIDI inputs make it very easy to link any input to any controller on the screen, and you have an unlimited supply of samples and synthesizers, and you can just start playing music. So. This is rather easy to set up, but is my three-year-old going to be able to set it up? And the answer is, I'm going to set it up so after she clicks on the icon that opens up LMMS for her, everything she needs to do will be done with the keyboard itself. So she'll have the volume control, but I also want her to be able to choose what instrument she's playing. And again, there's no instrument button here, but I'm going to use this modulation wheel so that she can choose from 128 different instruments just by moving it. So that's what we're going to do in the next video, just to make it easier for her. And there you go, you can just start playing music. So. Just like that. Thank you for watching. As always, please visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. Also, if you feel like you enjoy my videos and you want to become a supporter, you can go to patreon.com forward slash melex1000 become a supporter there. If you can't support me financially, think about sharing, liking, subscribing, and commenting below. All those things help me greatly. I thank you for watching, and as always, I hope that you have a great day. And also to see the next video in this tutorial or in this series or uh, all the videos in this playlist, there should be a link in the description of this video to the full playlist where you can watch through all the videos uh, that I have uh, on these topics. So thank you for watching, and I hope that you have a great day.